So in this video I'm going to talk about the uh, Japanese uh, sort of cure for uh, terminal cancer, incurable cancer, stage 4 cancer, however you want to put it. Um, this Japanese treatment has been used uh, in the last few years with quite incredible results. Um, the doctors I've spoken to about it who are all world leading oncologists um, they are um, mm, they are careful in uh, in what they say um, but reading between the lines they're pretty confident um, that essentially now they can cure um, terminal cancer in a very small or potentially very small um, percentage of the patients um, but in a in a very reliable well-defined way so um, they can sort of see if it's if it's working there's no kind of um, guesswork in it so I'm going to explain the process um, so this is this is not stuff that's happening in clinical trials it's kind of uh, all experimental treatment um, or mm, so it's a combination of non-experimental treatments being used in an experimental way. Anyway, um, I'll just get into it because that'll make it a bit clearer. So terminal cancer is cancer that has spread um, far away from the place it started. Um, and up till now, um, very few people have been cured from stage four cancer. Um, there are some interesting exceptions. Um, testicular cancer, Stage four can often be cured with chemotherapy alone, um, which is amazing. Um, yeah, there are um, examples of almost all cancers where um, yeah people have been treated with so sort of standard treatment, so chemotherapy, surgery, radiation, and are kind of um, living cancer-free. For more than five years, which is basically the, the kind of current um, standard of, of what it means to be cured from cancer. However, um, there is research from some cancers that uh, on some cancers that uh, cancer can actually recur up to ten years later, um, and there are a few cancers um, where survival is really really poor. Pancreatic cancer being the obvious one. Pancreatic cancer, currently median overall survival is 11 months, I think, um, in developed countries. And um, the uh, two-year survival rate is basically 0%. Um, very, very few people with pancreatic cancer live beyond a year of being diagnosed. However, um, the doctors I'm going to talk about, um, they have now, um, with the combination of treatments I'm going to talk about, 20% of their pancreatic cancer patients, stage 4 pancreatic cancer patients, um, are alive after two years, um, which shows how incredible this combination of treatments is. Um, so three stages of treatment, basically. Um, stage 1 is to use a combination of treatments to get the cancer... Um, so it's just in one um, organ basically from what I can tell so if someone has um, uh, colon cancer that has spread to the lungs and liver um, and uh, you know the treatment would be well, st so standard treatment would be um, typically be remove the um, primary tumour where it started in the colon and then treat with chemotherapy and molecular targeted agents to try and extend life. Um, in Japan, some doctors are doing that, but adding treatments that um, make the chemotherapy and molecular target therapy work better. Um, and um, also 
those treatments um, delay the essentially inevitable point where those um, chemotherapy or radiation stop working. Um, so these could be treatments like um, hypothermia treatment where uh, the organs are heated to increase blood flow into the tumour so more chemotherapy agent gets in. Um, that also um, frustrates the uh, cancer's um, ability to suppress the immune system. Um, and then combining that with um, autologous immunotherapy, so those are immunotherapies made from the cancer, the, the cancer patient's own white blood cells, um, these treatments combined for some people will reduce the cancer to one place. So it's a, you know, the, per, the patient has some scans and there is uh, no visible um, cancers in the lungs anymore and there are just some stubborn tumours in the liver. So then step two is to um, treat those um, those chemo resistant tumours with these um, sort of min I don't know how you put minimally invasive radiation therapies. Um, radiation therapies generally kind of you know doctors I guess call non invasive um, treatments so treatments where they don't cut you open. But um, I think for patients. Um, you know, treatments like cyber knife and tomotherapy, proton beam therapy. So these radiation treatments, where the um, the nature of the treatment means that there's a lot less damage to surrounding tissue, um, healthy tissue. Um, yeah, it doesn't get damaged so much. So in the case of um, uh, cyber knife, it's um, I guess gamma rays, but Instead of one um, high intensity beam, it's 96 low intensity beams all focused on the tumor. So the maximum intensity should be on, on the tumor without too much damage to healthy tissue. Um, and then stage three is to follow that up very quickly with intensive autologous immunotherapy. Um, the reason being that the radiation treatment um, breaks up the cancer cells, uh, sort of, um, things like causing double breaks in the DNA. Um, but these kind of scraps of cancer cells and scraps of cancer stem cells um, can float around the body, causing other tumors. Um, so a, you need to deal with them, and chemotherapy doesn't um, deal with them, from what I understand. Um, and I mean autologous immunotherapy can but B it's the ideal time to do autologous immunotherapy because if you take out some of the patient's white blood cells you massively multiply them in a lab put them back in the patient's body um, with all that broken cancer tumour floating around um, the immune system and the, the white blood cells that you've put back in the patient's body um, can uh, recognise those um, uh, scraps of, of, of cancer, so it teaches the immune system um, to attack the cancer, which is really good. Um, so this three-step process now, it's essentially being done with curative intent, which um, which means they're not just trying to reduce your symptoms and make you live a bit longer. Um, they think it actually cures the cancer. Um, stage four incurable cancer. Um, I'm not going to name any of the people doing this um, because yeah, they're they're very they're very very careful um, about the yeah they don't make like massive claims about this stuff, um, but they're getting very good results. Um, you know the, these are not trials with like hundreds and hundreds or you know a thousand people or whatever these are um, select patients obviously a whole bunch of patients are not going to get through that first step um, you know the, the the combination best combination treatments available 
for certain patients it's not going to reduce the cancer to one place. Um, for me, um, I got to the end of the first step. So I had a PET scan last year that showed um, that the, there was no visible cancer in my body except for um, the liver. So even though the cancer had spread across the abdomen and the peritoneum, which is the membrane on the abdomen, the omentum, which is the protective fatty uh, kind of fat around the organs, um, loads of lymph nodes, and uh, yeah, six biggish tumors in the liver. Um, my combination of six cancer treatments over a severe and a half, well, yeah, combination of surgery followed by six can continuous cancer treatments over a year and a half period had um, reduced all the tumours down to just um, three in the liver. So I was actually accepted for stage two. Um, unfortunately, just that, like a week before I was due to start um, eight weeks of radiation therapy, um, the blood test showed that the the chemotherapy I was on had stopped working, basically, that... Um, my tumours were resistant, had become resistant to uh, the um, current chemo regime, which means I had to change. Um, I, I, in fact, decided to stick with the same chemotherapy and change the molecular target therapy from Avast into Herbitux, which is why I've got the skin, skin rash. Herbitux is a epidermal growth factor receptor inhibitor, which means... Um, attacks a certain protein that uh, colon cancer cells overexpress, epidermal growth factor receptor. Um, unfortunately, as the name suggests, epidermal growth factor receptor is the basis, the thing that makes skin grow, um, which is why you get this terrible rash, face, top of head, chest, back, kind of even down to like the, the thighs at the moment. Um, this, is, this is level one, um, it can go to like level three, which is an orange crust and uh, secondary skin infections. And it's just really nasty stuff. Um, so I'm hoping to get uh, reassessed for proton beam therapy, um, maybe end of February or something, um, if the tumor markers are okay. So um, I obviously think it's amazing that in Japan, doctors are treating stage four cancer with curative intent. Now I should, yeah, I wanna, I wanna be very careful what I say. So these are, um, hmm. these doctors are not making any um, massive claims. They're pointing out that they've got very, very good results with um, certain patients. Um, and what what what's interesting for me is is that it's this a, a three step process of combination treatment to get the cancer down into one place. Um, the more gentle kind of uh, radiation treatments is step two, and then um, step three, the intensive immunotherapy. Um, it's a it's a sort of well defined process. It's not like you have you do it all and then see whether it's worked, you go step by step. So you don't try step two until step one is successful. And if you're lucky, um, you may have quite a few options to go through to try and get stage one, step one successful. You know, you might, you may be someone who can have a whole bunch of different chemotherapies or molecular target therapies um, and get to that point where You've just got sort of one or one or two tumors in one organ, and uh, hopefully in a place where you could get them with uh, these newer radiation treatments. Um, yeah, so I think it's very interesting and promising, um, and uh, I will hopefully be finding out um, in a couple of months' time if uh, if everything goes okay, I get accepted again for proton beam therapy. So. Um, Please um, share this video and uh, please hit subscribe. 
um, because then more people will see it and uh, you'll see my update videos. And if I do um, get accepted for proton beam therapy again, um, I'll be doing videos throughout the eight week process and then the follow up immunotherapy. Um, yeah, so please do hit the subscribe button. Thanks a lot for listening.